Light changes an atmosphere immediately. Even the youngest humans are drawn to light before anything else. <laughs> Here in the Pacific Northwest, we have some great contemporary artists working with light. And why is that? Perhaps that's because by early fall, it gets so dark so early and stays dark for so long. Yoli Alessandrini works in laser beams and large LED installations for her highly technical, elegant works. Colored light, she says, has a fundamentally different quality than pigments or dyes. Add color to pigments or dyes, and eventually you get the color black. Add colors to light, you get white. Dylan Newworth works with neon. He's been drawn to light ever since he was a kid when his mother hung her name in neon lights in their kitchen. He also remembers what he calls the black hole, a dark space under the sink where she kept her bourbon. Turning on that neon light was the opposite of that hole. One of his neon pieces is script reading, just be your selfie. So some people took selfies with it, but others were enraged by the elevation of selfie culture and the piece was broken and repaired seven times until finally he gave up and then it just read, just be, which he thought was kind of perfect. Multimedia artist Tanaz Farsi uses light in bold political works that confront colonialist legacies. Tanaz points out that light can be a type of violence when it's too bright in your face and demanding attention all the time. So naturally, it's the go-to material for signs and advertising. Light offers us lessons and opposites. To manifest light, you must start with darkness. Light, which has no substance, still needs a partner, a material to draw attention to itself. It changes a space without changing itself. Light is otherworldly, yet at the same time, it illuminates our place in our existence here.